part two of the maze game tutorial. And part one, we uh, fleshed out stage one. We added a background, some more um, wall sprites, and we set up a target sprite. So we're going to do some of our programming here in part two. So we're going to go to the block screen. I've already set you up with uh, up, down, left, right buttons. First thing we need to do is make some variables. So we'll start off here, and our first variable will be uh, how about we'll make time, and we'll set this to 30 seconds. And I'm um, just do this the quick way. I'm just going to duplicate these. So then we need time. We need lives, of which we need three to start off with. And then we need one more, which is the level. And the level will start at level one. OK, so we've got our variables. Um, let's see here. We need to actually, we're going to jump right into building some procedures here. So we are going to build the first thing is an end game procedure. So let's see here. We go into functions, and this one will be in the game. And the first thing we want to do here is uh, let's see, we get our sounds, our sounds going, so we can have more sound player. So we need to stop whatever is currently playing, and we got to change the source to let's see here. We have game over. We have that in here. Yep. Okay, we got game over music, and we got to play it. And we got to turn off our timer because that's you know just good coding practice. And then we want to navigate to our game over screen. Alrighty. So we got our end game procedure. We're going to need another procedure. This will be the touching wall procedure. I'm going to move this out of the way. Uh, actually, I'm going to. I'm going to collapse it so we have more space. So let's see here. The next thing we need to do is a touching wall procedure. And in this one, when we're touching the wall, we want to change uh, lives by negative one. And we want to set our lives label text to, no, no some text here so we'll add join and we want to say lives and we'll put an additional space in there and then we'll put we'll grab the actual value for the lives let's plug it in there it seems to be the way it is and we want to move our ball sprite so we'll go move our ball and we want that at 25 and 25 and then we'll put in a quick condition that if our lives are equal to zero, we should run our in-game procedure. We are going to do some work on touching walls, so I'm gonna, not going to collapse it. I'm going to just put it over here. All right, our next procedure will be a reset function. This will be a big procedure, but that's OK. So let's pull this out. So we can get this in the middle so we have a little more space. All right. So let's see here. This will be reset. And first thing we're going to do is we're going to switch to stage one, uh, which will make more sense later when you build stage two. So we'll go to stage one and we'll move the ball. I'm just going to duplicate that because it's quicker that way. Um, and then I got to set. We'll do some things here. So we've got to set our lives to three. And we've got to set the lives label. And I'm just going to copy some of this code because it would be a lot to continuously rewrite. So actually, I'm going to pull this out, Get this a little faster. So got the lives label. Okay, got that one. And then I'm gonna do this. Let's see, can I just do this easily? No, I'm gonna I'm gonna do some copying and pasting because I think it's faster this way. So then we want to set time back to 30. And then I'm gonna use this block of code that I just want to reuse here. So now we'll switch this to the time label. And we'll call it time. 
and this to time, and we're going to have to do this one more time for the, let's see here, the level. So we'll pull this out, the level should be one, and in the interest of time, I'm just going to copy this over here. This will be the levels label. I'll go level. I'll change this to level. All right, what else do we have to put in here? We should, when we, we're going to, because we're turning off in the end game, the timer, we'll get the timer started up again. And then why don't we switch the sound source back to the level one music. Or you can use whatever music you want, but I'm going to use the level one music, and then I want to play it. So sound one, play. Okay, there's our reset procedure, and I'm going to collapse this in the interest of space. Put it up here. All right, what else do we have to do? Okay, so now we got to program a couple events, event handlers for the collisions that will happen. So we want, uh, these are, I believe, under the event block here. So it's here, the canvas box event. So we need when the ball type collides with the wall type, we want to call touching wall. And we can collapse that in the interest of space. And then we want when the ball type hits any edge, we want to do touching wall. I'm going to collapse that. And then we need to get our start button. So when the start button is clicked, we want to get the reset going. And then the last thing we need to do, or is it the last thing, second to last thing, is we want the timer going. So when the timer fires, if it's above zero, so let's check in and say if our time is, oh, okay, we're going to do this differently. If it's equal to zero, we'll do this. If it's equal to zero, then we know to call end game. Uh, or else, we're just going to change it by one. And make sure we'll have that reflected on the label. So I'm just going to duplicate this, bring it back over, and call this the time label. And then time. And I got to make sure this is the time. Okay. One last thing for this part, collapse that for now, is when the ball type collides with the target sprite. So let's see here. Uh, okay. So we'll start from here. We'll go ball type with the target sprite. Um, we'll want to stop the sound. We'll change the source. And we'll switch the source to end of level. We'll play it. And we'll change the level by one. And actually, a couple more things we can do a little more quickly if we just grab that one again. So now change the level label. Okay, we want to make sure that there's plenty of time. So we're actually going to use the set and not the change. So we're going to set time back to 30. So that if we go to a second level, that it's already reset for us. Make sure the label is reflective of that. And we want to stop the uh, the timer, uh, so we don't want it. We don't want it going until the new level opens. So we'll go to our timer and enabled the set to false. And we have the timer enabled to false. We want to actually add a new block uh, called the wait block because we want the we want the music to play through before we do anything. So actually, we're going to wait seven seconds. And the very last thing here is we want to end the at the end game function. Um, when we add more levels 
uh, we're going to change, uh, we'll change this event handler around, but for now we can just put the NB in there. Good luck.